Welcome to News Today with WDW News Today. I'm Tom Corliss. Here now the news for July 9th, 2021 from our new home here at WDWNT Celebration. We launched last night with our first episode of uh, WDW News Tonight on the Unplanned Downtime YouTube channel, which you could subscribe to at unplannedDowntime.com. And if you want to help us celebrate our uh, grand opening here at WDWNT Celebration. First of all, uh, if you like this video and comment underneath, uh, we're going to pick out some people in the comments to win one of our grand opening buttons, which are over here because we happen to have some extras. So if you want one of those, be sure you comment underneath, like the video. Make sure you're subscribed too. And then if you want to commemorate it in an even more special way, we have merchandise. We have pins available at carouselofproducts.com. We have our open edition logo pin, which has our WDWNT Celebration location logo. But then, those of you at home uh, can get a special limited edition of 100 uh, metal pin that is only for those of you at home. There was one we saw only here in the studio, but uh, this pin is available at carouselproducts.com. Only 100 of these, then they're gone forever to commemorate our grand opening here in celebration. But let's get to the news. Props and decorations have been removed from the office in the queue of the Jungle Cruise at the Magic Kingdom as cultural sensitivity changes continue. These are not the first props to be removed from the queue, but it probably is the biggest removal so far. The Baron office stands out as guests circle it, a radio still sits on the table, and the desk and chair are still present. We're sure that the office will get new and updated decorations later on, at least we hope. We hope so. It was announced earlier this year that the Sorcerers of the Magic Kingdom card game would be closing at the end of this past January, and yesterday we saw more game pieces removed from around the park. Although quite a few points were missing in Fantasyland, we noticed they were still intact in other places. So what is missing here is the, the key holes where you would tap your, your cards. Back in the day, they gave you a little fake cardboard key you would tap. Remember that, kids? Before Magic Bands. And uh, yeah, so they've started removing these. We're not sure when they'll all be gone, but uh, they're, they're pretty adamant about removing everything related to Sorcerers of the Magic Kingdom at this point. Warn everyone you meet of hitchhiking ghosts with new socks. They're available at Memento Mori in the Magic Kingdom. The purple socks have black and neon green accents. The three hitchhiking ghosts peek out of the words, beware of hitchhiking ghosts. The socks are $14.99. Just after Casey's Corner finally reopened to Magic Kingdom guests, a new dress inspired by the hot dog eatery has appeared at Uptown, this is a weird news day, has appeared at Uptown Jewelers for $128. A dress inspired by a hot dog restaurant. It's actually really cool. I love this. Um, it's inspired by the striped baseball uniform worn by cast members at Casey's Corner. and even has the logo from the beautiful illuminated sign outside. This is... One of the best Walt Disney World merchandise items possibly of all time, I have to say. It really is. Uh, it has a row of navy blue buttons and navy blue stripes line the bottom of the dress and has a red collar. And it comes with a blue belt. Are you ready to sip and savor across six continents at the Epcot International Food and Wine Festival presented by Corksicle? Registered trademark. This year features 129 delicious days from July 15th through November 20th to celebrate the best of food and drink at the more than 20 festival-exclusive global marketplaces opening this week and even more coming in the fall. You can check out all the menus at WDWNT.com. Again, we'll be there, of course, July 15th for the start, as we always are, bringing you reviews of every single item. So stay tuned for that. The schedule has been released for the previously announced America Gardens Bandstand Concert Series at the Food and Wine Festival. The series will feature local Central Florida bands performing at the America Gardens Theater, as you might guess, Friday through Monday evenings. Here's a full schedule of who will be performing, at least what's announced so far. July 16th to the 19th will be Epic Live. July 23rd to the 26th, Champagne Orchestra. July 30th to August 2nd, Element August 6th through the 9th, we'll have Sound Society. August 13th through the 16th, The Hooligans. That's what they call us sometimes. August 20th to the 23rd, The Vibe. Checks out. And August 27th to the 30th, you have the M80. September 3rd through the 6th, The Latin Ambition. September 10th to 13th, Audio Exchange. September 17th to 20th, The Hooligans are back. That's what they say when we come back. And September 24th to the 27th, Epic Live. 
returns. Uh, obviously, nothing has been announced for the rest of the event. There is a rumor that perhaps Eat to the Beat concert series with uh, more known artists may begin at that point, but it's all conjecture at this point. To celebrate the flavors of Florida at Disney Springs, Amaretz Patisserie has a limited time Florida sunset eclair with blood orange mousse, dulce de leche mousse, infused orange liqueur, and candied orange zest. It's $10. It seems like a lot for that. Check out our full review at WDWNT.com. See if it's worth it. Marvel's Black Widow has finally hit theaters in Disney Plus, and to celebrate the release, Deluxe Burger at Disney Springs has two limited-time Black Widow-inspired items, a milkshake and, as you might guess, a hamburger. The Black Widow shake is vanilla gelato blended with morello cherry puree, cayenne pepper, and lime with layers of chocolate chiffon cake, topped with a red velvet cake pop. It's $9.99. That sounds like a much better deal than just that little tiny cake for $10. Uh, there's also the Black Widow Burger. It's a signature blend beef patty with Widow's Bite Scotch Bonnet Sauce, Ninja Radish Slaw, Cheddar, Lettuce, Tomato, and Grilled Onions for $13.49. The reviews of both of these items are at WDWNT.com. Disney's Boardwalk Inn has reopened to guests as of July 2nd. This is the first time guests have been able to stay at that part of the hotel since Walt Disney World closed due to the COVID-19 pandemic back in March of 2020. Of course, the villas opened in June of 2020, but we were lucky enough to stay at the inn, uh, and we were upgraded, thankfully, to a two-bedroom suite, which is uh, it's a rare room type. So if you have any interest in this room type, we have a full video tour right here on YouTube, a full photo tour on our website, of course, uh, dozens and dozens of uh, Disney hotel room tours from around the world are right here on our channel. Be sure to check them out if you ever want to take a look. Ohana at Disney's Polynesian Village Resort has finally reopened. Uh, as you know, Ohana means noodles, but we're not talking about the noodles just yet. we got to start with a hearty breakfast. And all you care to enjoy breakfast, which returned this morning. You check out the full review, including Mickey and Stitch waffles and... Uh, some themed character smoothies we tried on our website. And by the time you're watching this, the noodles are back and our review will be posted of dinner at Ohana. See what we thought of the new items on our website. Walt Disney World has announced the reopening of several shuttered resort hotels and you can book them all right now. They are available now for you to book. Disney's All-Star Music Resort will open on September 16th. Disney's Port Orleans Resort Riverside beginning October 14th, Disney's Port Orleans Resort French Quarter October 28th, and Disney's All-Star Sports is back December 9th. Again, all are available to book right now. This means that all Walt Disney World Resort hotels will be open once again by the end of 2021. That's great news. Mickey Mouse shaped hand soap has made its way across the ocean to Walt Disney World now. Previously only available at the Tokyo Disney Resort. Of course, we told you a couple days ago that it was out at Disneyland. It's now here in Orlando, Florida. You can pick it up. In fact, we've put it in the bathrooms right here at WDWNT Celebrations. If you come to a show, get to use some Mickey hand soap. But you also buy it for yourself. Use it at home. Highly recommended. Love it. Found it at Boutique at the Polynesian, but it's all over property. It's only $9.99 is perhaps the best price souvenir on property. Halloween time at the Disneyland Resort returns with frightfully fun experiences for guests of all ages from September 3rd through October 31st with Halloween magic throughout Disneyland Park and Disney California Adventure Park as well as the downtown Disney District. Guests will encounter favorite Disney characters throughout Disneyland. On Main Street, Mickey and friends will show off their Halloween finest and other characters found throughout the park include dastardly Disney villains who have come out to cause some mischief. Guests will find festive seasonal decor and pumpkins galore to add to the magic. Guests of all ages will enjoy taking photographs with the iconic giant Mickey Mouse jack-o'-lantern. And as guests journey through the park, they'll find pumpkin statues representing Fantasyland, Tomorrowland, Adventureland, Critter Country, and Frontierland surrounding the partner statue in front of Sleeping Beauty Castle. Befitting the supernatural season, the Haunted Mansion Holiday will feature a merry makeover of the beloved Erie Estate. And every night from September 3rd through October 31st in Walt Disney's original park, guests will enjoy a dreadfully delightful treat in the form of Halloween Screams, which is no longer a fireworks show. It's now a supernatural projection and special effects show, you know, because of money. <laughs> On weekend nights, Halloween Screams will turn into a fireworks show. Only if you come when it's busy, though. 
In Frontierland, guests may commemorate the celebration of the Day of the Dead with a colorful Dia de los Muertos tribute featuring a musical trio of iconic skeleton figurines, brightly colored flowers, and other decorative items. And Oogie Boogie from Tim Burton's The Nightmare Before Christmas will loom over guests at the entrance to Disney California Adventure as he uses his magic to create a forever Halloween for everyone to enjoy. Under his spell, favorite attractions will be transformed for the season. Guests can mosey on over to Cars Land as Radiator Springs becomes Radiator Screams, where residents decorate their homes with frights and delights for a unique hall o -ween makeover. Guests can continue the family-friendly fun by taking a spin on popular Cars Land attractions that rev up with Halloween spirit, whether it's Mater's Junkyard Jamboree, crooning spooky songs to become Mater's Graveyard Jamboree, or Luigi's Rollicking Roadsters, which becomes Luigi's Hunkin' Halloween. Videos of all these are here on the channel if you want to check them out. They're super cute. Love them. And, of course, the beloved Guardians of the Galaxy Mission Breakout will become Monsters After Dark. Once again, try to get that really very memorable song out of your head. Monsters, it just repeats Monsters After Dark 40 times. But I love it. It's great. That is back as well, which is great to hear. Over on Buena Vista Street, Mickey Mouse will be with friends, throwing it back with old-fashioned Halloween costumes. Seasonal decor will add to the Halloween ambiance of Buena Vista Street. And at night, the Carthay Circle restaurant oozes with Halloween magic as bats swarm energy pulses from within and projections light up the iconic structure with a spellbinding display. You also commemorate the magic with a photo in front of the 10-foot tall statue of the Headless Horseman just across the street. Guests will experience the return of Plaza de la Familia in Paradise Gardens Park from September 3rd through November 2nd. This immersive limited time celebration honors the spirits of Dia de los Muertos with entertainment, festive foods, crafts, and interactive experiences. For family fun after park hours, Oogie Boogie Bash is back as well. Look at that. California gets their actual Halloween party this year. It'll be offered as a separate ticketed event at DCA from, uh, on 25 select nights starting September 9th. Tickets will be available beginning July 13th at Disneyland.com. At Oogie Boogie Bash, kids and guests of all ages can trick or treat their way through the park and their Halloween costumes and encounter both uh, spooky and fantastic characters. Guests will experience the park in a unique way with exclusive offerings like immersive tree trails. Frightfully Fun Parade is back. Villains Grove at Redwood Creek Challenge Trail, which was really cool, by the way. Mickey's Trick and Treat Show and more. Retail locations throughout both parks will offer seasonal merchandise, and for guests looking to add a sweet treat to their day of tricks, food and beverage locations will offer specialty items, as you might have guessed. The Disney Parks blog has shared a fresh look at Disneyland Parks Jungle Cruise, which is now soft open to guests as of today, unfinished, mind you. It will be completed, at least advertised to be completed, as of July 16th with those series of cultural sensitivity updates. Among the new scenes on the attraction we're getting our first look at is the partially sunk Mekong Maiden covered in mischievous monkeys. Just like in Florida, there will be a new version of the trapped safari scene as well as Trader Sam's gift shop. A uh, fun thing we learned today is uh, the monkeys actually on each coast will be holding a different map of the Jungle Cruise. In Florida, they're holding a map of the Disneyland Jungle Cruise. At Disneyland, they have a map of the Florida Jungle Cruise, which would explain why. The skipper got lost in the first place. I thought that was a really fun little element. President Loki has arrived at Avengers Campus in Disney California Adventure. And no, it's still not a spoiler, folks. Get over it. We had to stop by and see our favorite anti-hero in his new outfit that's straight out of the promotional campaign for the Disney Plus series. I like how we just rubbed that in. We just had to make sure we reminded you. I love, I love it when we're mean. This marks the third outfit from the hit series to make an appearance in the land. This is cool they keep doing this. Following Loki's TVA prisoner and variant outfits, we found President Loki charming the crowd from atop Avengers headquarters. We also ran into him on the ground near Avengers headquarters. The season finale of Loki premieres next Wednesday, July 14th. We'll be sure to spoil it for you on next week's show. The Disney Parks blog has revealed that characters from Marvel's upcoming... I'm going to... Spoiler alert, there's more Marvel movies coming... Uh, characters from Eternals and Shang-Chi and The Legend of the Ten Rings will be appearing at Avengers Campus at some point in the future. Uh, no further details were provided, uh, but uh, the Eternals will begin in the fall, sometime around the film's release November 5th. Uh, Disney Parks blog was less specific about Shang-Chi and The Legend of the Ten Rings. A new photo op background with props is available at Pixar Pier at California Adventure, featuring the animation studio's latest film, Luca. The set features props and iconic imagery from the movie. You can even take a picture with Machiavelli. It's a cat. 
Start your engines. A new Cars Land mini backpack has joined the Disney Parks Lounge Fly Collection. Perfect for cruising around Radiator Springs. We found the new bag at the World of Disney in the downtown Disney district for $75. It's patterned with the Cars Land logo. The colors are subtle and the logo doesn't really stand out from the dark background. Under the lounge fly placard is a zippered pouch. The lining of the backpack features the same Cars Land logo on a red background. The Disney Cruise Line's newest ship, the Disney Wish, set sail in 2022, and we learned a little more about one of the new dining experiences on board. The Disney Wish will host Worlds of Marvel, the first ever Marvel cinematic dining adventure, where you'll play an interactive role in an action-packed Avengers mission that unfolds around you, complete with a worldly menu inspired by the Marvel Cinematic Universe. Disney describes Avengers Quantum Encounter as Disney Cruise Line's most ambitious dining experience ever. The exclusive Avengers adventure will assemble some of Earth's mightiest and tiniest superheroes in a larger-than-life showcase of revolutionary quantum technology and world-class cuisine. It's more than a meal and more than a show. It's something that's never been done on land or at sea. Quantum Encounter will follow Ant-Man and the Wasp as they embark on their first public speaking engagement on behalf of the Avengers. They host a special presentation of the most powerful superhero technologies, such as Captain America's shield, Iron Man's arc reactor, and Ant-Man's Pym particles, giving the audience an up-close look at the holographic models, field reports, and iconic scenes from the Marvel Cinematic Universe that will be displayed on screens around the room. The highlight of the special event is a hands-on demonstration of the latest and greatest Pym tech, the Quantum Core, which uses cutting-edge and highly unstable technology, like our studio, to shrink and grow targets at the push of a button. A few misfires will result in a hilarious Ant-Man style hijinks, but real trouble begins when an unexpected villain shows up with a fearsome army in tow, eager to get their hands on this powerful quantum technology. Ant-Man and the Wasp will need all the help they can get to save the day, calling on Captain America, Captain Marvel, and the brave diners of the Disney Wish for backup. That means you folks. Every table at Worlds of Marvel will feature its own Quantum Core, a brand new device that can cause objects to shrink and grow remotely. During dinner, you will assist Ant-Man and the Wasp by pushing buttons on these things. Uh, that'll do something, apparently. We don't know what. It looks cool. I hope it does something cool. This could be really neat. Menus are still being developed, but Worlds of Marvel will offer... Stay with me for this one, folks. Folks, this is inspired by Wakanda, Sokovia, and the Avengers home base of New York City. So food from, from not real places. I don't know. Could be fun. Could be fun. But in addition to that and other upscale table service restaurants, the Cruise Line's Disney Wish will also have more casual walk-up dining locations. In a press release, Disney Cruise Line announced Marceline Market, as well as Mickey and Friends Festival of Foods, named for Walt Disney's early childhood hometown of Missouri, uh, Marceline Market is a stylish food hall inspired by popular marketplaces around the world. Here, guests will find an ever-changing menu of specialized offerings in a vibrant, free-flow setting with both indoor and outdoor seating and breathtaking ocean views. Featuring 10 food stalls and a cafe-style beverage bar in the center, Marceline Market will be styled as an old industrial loft converted into a bustling marketplace with a distinctly disney design twist. At this food hall, the local proprietors are Disney characters, as each station is themed to beloved animated films such as Tangled, Ratatouille, Alice in Wonderland, Zootopia, and more. The storied shopkeepers will curate a wide-ranging variety of freshly prepared cuisines for the whole family, including American classics, international specialties, comfort food, seafood, soups and salads, vegetarian and plant-based fare, baked goods, and desserts. Marceline Market will offer casual walk-around dining experience for breakfast and lunch, followed by table service dining at dinner time with entrees cooked to order. Located right in the middle of the fun of the upper decks, Mickey and Friends Festival of Foods will be the perfect place for families to grab a quick bite. It's lunch or dinner. Avid Disney cruisers will be particularly pleased by the mix of fan-favorite treats like Disney Cruise Line's signature soft-serve ice cream with two brand new selections. The Disney Wish will feature the fleet's first dedicated quick service venues for barbecue and Mexican-inspired fare. Also offering delectable American classics and other snackable delights, the open-air eatery comprises five uniquely themed food stalls. There's Mickey's Smokestack Barbecue, Donald's Cantina, Daisy's Pizza Pies, Goofy's Grill, and Sweet Minnie's Ice Cream. The whimsical design is inspired by the seaside boardwalk setting featuring the popular Mickey Mouse uh, animated shorts, a fitting addition to the Mickey and Friends themed family district on the upper deck, of course, also home to the Aqua Mouse, so it does all sort of tie in. A sizable shaded seating area will provide convenient and comfortable accommodations for families to relax and enjoy their meals.
For more information on these stories and more, head on over to WDWNT.com. This program brought to you by our official travel agent sponsor, The Vacationeer, the engineers of your next magical vacation. Sit back and let their team of vacation planning experts craft your family's next trip. The best part, the services are free. Hotel, park tickets, dining, and more. Visit WDWNT.travel for details. The Vacationeer, the official travel agency of WDWNT. If you're enjoying the show, be sure to like this video, subscribe to WDW News Today on YouTube for more great content, and click the bell for notifications. Also, make sure to hit select all notifications so you never miss an episode of the show. For the worldwide leader in Disney Parks news, this is Tom Corliss saying enjoy the rest of your today. Have a great, big, beautiful tomorrow. Welcome to Unplanned Downtime, the YouTube channel for all your favorites, including Cosmic Read Live, discussions and imaginary attractions, Deep in the Plus, reviewing the catalog on Disney Plus. Ink and Paint, celebrating female voices in the Disney fandom. WDW News Tonight, a late night comedy show with sketches and characters. Boxed In, opening mystery packages and viewer mail. Picky Eaters, trying to eat our way across Disney restaurants. WDW and TV RPG, a tabletop adventure set in Tokyo Disney Sea. And more of your favorites. Subscribe now at unplannedowntime.com. Remember, it's not an accident, it's unplanned downtime. <laughs>